Please don't tell the supervisor I have the flu. <coughs> Woohoo! That new prediction comes as new infections of COVID-19 are exploding nationwide. Now over to Arnie Pie with Arnie in the Sky. Round 401 is going around and around and around and around. Good afternoon from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. A lot of people say you guys predicted Trump's run. I know. I know. We'll take credit for anything. <laughs> Simpsons predicted the future shot by shot because we're part of the Illuminati, <laughs> which is true. We are. Okay, who wants waffles? I do, I do, I do! The Simpsons is the longest running cartoon series in history. They started in 1989 and have been going ever since, even getting a movie out of the deal. And to that end, the Simpsons have predicted the future a few times to the extent that they are kind of freaking people out. We'll show you some examples of this. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 15, 2020 in general. I know what you're thinking. How can an episode of The Simpsons predict a whole year, especially one that isn't done yet? Well, that's a good question. But to that question, I answer with the episode, Marge and Chains. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. For this episode, it predicts not one, not two, not three, but four major things that happened in 2020. You ready? Okay, first and foremost, it predicted a virus of sorts via the Osaka flu. In short, some people from another nation brought a virus to Springfield via boxes of content, and the joke was that they sneezed into the box and the virus lasted until it got to Springfield, which is impossible for the record. So naturally, the people are desperate for a cure, but they don't listen to the medical advice of their local doctor. We need a cure! We need a cure! <laughs> Why the only cure is bed rest. Which is the second thing via people not respecting social distancing and not wearing masks. And that leads them to thing number three, where they knock over a truck and release killer bees. If that sounds familiar, there was a scare in the United States about the arrival of Asian giant hornets, aka the murder hornets. So what was number four? In that very same and clearly jam-packed episode, Marge gets arrested wrongfully, and that leads to civil unrest in Springfield, including burning down the police station. This is very much like the riots and protests that happened via the murder of George Floyd via police officers who used deadly force to restrain him for having a counterfeit $20 bill. So yeah, The Simpsons had a banger of an episode, don't you think? Imagine if they had an hour episode for that one. We might have had a glimpse into the back half of 2020. Number 14, President Trump. When it came to the 2016 presidential election, just about everyone thought that Hillary Clinton was going to be Donald Trump. Some pundits even had their winnings with a 90% certainty, but that was wrong, and Trump won. And you could argue that we've been paying the price ever since. No one saw this coming, except The Simpsons, all the way back in 2000. The Simpsons thought it could happen. They said it was going to happen, and they played it big for the viewers at home. If you're curious as to when this happened, this was in the episode Bart to the Future, and featured a future timeline in which Lisa was actually the President of the United States, and she said lines that indicated that the billionaire businessman was indeed the President before her. You know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. What was the intent of the gag though? Was it just a simple joke? Not according to the writers, they actually did the episode as a kind of warning to America. That just seemed like the logical last stop before hitting bottom, the writer said. It was pitched because it was consistent with the vision of America going insane. Matt Groening was asked about this and he recalled why Trump was picked then and why it's even more ironic now. Trump was of course the most absurd placeholder joke name that we could think of at the time, and that's still true. It's beyond satire. Indeed, Trump's current reign as president has been one full of controversy and chaos, and and that's to put things lightly, and he could get another term which would make the Simpsons predictions all the more hilarious, ironic, and scary. Number 13, Lisa the Greek. Predicting sports event outcomes is nothing new, and it would have been interesting if the Simpsons didn't try and do that. But not only did they do it, they did it correctly, three times during the Super Bowl. The initial airing of the football-centric episode Lisa the Greek, which is a reference to a famous sports reporter called Jimmy the Greek, came only a few days before Super Bowl 26, where Lisa correctly predicted the Washington Redskins would win. The next year, the staff decided to dub in the names of that year's competing teams. Wendell is cut, Rudy is cut, Janie, you're gone. Steven, I like your hustle. 
That's why it was so hard to cut you. And they were once again correct with their call of the Dallas Cowboys as victors. Their redubbings continued with moderate success over the next few years, finishing with another accurate prediction of the San Francisco 49ers over the San Diego Chargers in the Super Bowl 29. While they don't do it now, to our knowledge, that's cool that they were able to predict all those winners so accurately. Number 12, the Higgs boson. Homer Simpson is an American icon in the TV world, but one of his biggest traits is his stupidity. It's a trademark of the character, no doubt. However, Homer Simpson almost predicted the mass of the elementary particle, the Higgs boson, more than a decade before it was discovered. Yeah, I can't believe it either. The episode The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace aired in 1998. Homer becomes an inventor and is shown in front of a blackboard with a complicated equation. A fake formula? Something to tease the nerds? It may have felt that way at first, except it was real, and in 2012 it was almost spot on for the actual formula that predicted the mass of the Higgs boson particle. That equation predicts the mass of the Higgs boson, writer Simon Singh said. If you work it out, you get the mass of the Higgs boson that's only a bit larger than the nano mass of a Higgs boson actually is. It's kind of amazing as Homer makes this prediction 14 years before it was discovered. This is one weird and freaky coincidence. It's been proven multiple times that there are plenty of math geeks on the Simpsons writer staff, but to be able to basically predict the mass of a particle over a decade before accredited scientists could figure it out? Give them a Nobel Prize, am I right? Speaking of which, number 11, Nobel Peace Prize. Lisa Martin, database and Millhouse, had a betting pool for the Nobel Peace Prize in a 2010 episode of the show. If you look to the right of the red circle, you'll notice Milhouse picked Bengt or Holstrom to win the prize for economics. In 2016, Holstrom actually won that prize. That's one heck of a coincidence. And obviously, when it comes to the Nobel Peace Prize, certain people are nominated year after year for their accomplishments. Sigmund Freed, for example, was nominated 13 times, though he never did win. Anyway, it's kind of funny to see that they were able to pick a winner from the future, especially for a prize as grand as the Nobel Peace Prize. It helps cement that not only are they making predictions, they're going in all corners to make it feel like they're looking at everything. Number 10, Smartwatch. Let us not forget a simple thing about The Simpsons. Mainly, the show premiered in 1989, when a lot of key technology was still in its infancy. So when they did things about future technology, they were looking at what they had then and seeing how it could grow. For example, in 1995, cell phones weren't really a thing in the mass market yet, and the idea of a phone being put into a watch was unheard of, except for in The Simpsons. During season 6, a future timeline showed Lisa with a husband, and that husband had a smartwatch on. And that smartwatch had the ability to take orders from Hugh, Lisa's husband, and give orders to other people. Fast forward to 2014, and the first smartwatches were born and released to the public. And with each passing year, they get stronger in function and are able to do more. And the sky is literally the limit for them right now. Who knows what they might be in another 10 years? Obviously, the writers of The Simpsons couldn't have known about this back in 1995, but maybe they just felt that this was where everything was going, and thus they decided to do their own spin on things. Weirder things have happened in television and movies and beyond. Number 9, Greasy Monkey. One of the constant themes of The Simpsons is that Homer is not afraid to go and do things to get quick cash. One of Homer's many get-rich-quick schemes involved siphoning grease from various establishments and then selling it to make profit. It was a plan so prolific that delinquents were using it in real life, as reports show people stealing grease from restaurants around New York City to sell. The irony of this is many-fold, because you would think that grease from things like restaurants wouldn't be that valuable. And you would be wrong, because later on the show Mythbusters showed that strained cooking grease is not only valuable, it's a legit substitute for your diesel-powered vehicle, and has basically the same gas mileage. Imagine if Homer knew that during the episode, he might have honestly made a killing, and then people in real life would have done the same. Number 8. I didn't vote for him. When it comes to the elections, who wouldn't pass up the chance to make fun of them in some way? In 2008, The Simpsons decided to do an episode that featured not just voting, but voting via an electronic machine. This was a big step for the world following the 2000 presidential controversy in Florida where votes were recounted because of incorrect marking, and so surely, an electronic solution would work better because technology is meant to make our lives easier isn't it? Well, the Simpsons team knew the flaws in that system. So during the 2008 election, they had Homer use one of those machines to go and vote for Barack Obama. Except when he pushed the censor for Obama, the vote tallied up for John McCain. Instead, whoops, hilarity was of course brought upon by this. Fast forward a mere four years later to the 2012 election, and a very similar thing happened in real life. One of the electronic voting machines wasn't calibrated properly, and due to this, it took a vote for Barack Obama and tallied it for his opponent Mitt Romney instead. Obviously, this was a big scandal, and it had 
to be fixed, which would have been fine on its own, but to happen almost exactly the same way The Simpsons predicted it? Wow. There are such things as small coincidences in terms of guessing, like a voting machine having issues, but both Homer and the real person voted for Obama, and the machine checked it as the other person. Is that really a coincidence? Number 7. Fan Mail When you were a kid, did you ever send mail to a person that you really admired from the celebrity world? It's totally fine if you did. Many people have done that over the years, including Marge Simpson, who in the episode Brush with Greatness revealed that decades previous, she sent a painting to none other than Ringo Starr of the Beatles. She never heard back from him, though, until that episode when he finally sent a response to her painting. And in a true case of life imitating art, fellow Beatles sir Paul McCartney did a similar act to a fan who had sent him a letter 50 years previous, and he finally got back to them. I'm sure some will state that he should have sent it earlier, but come on, just be happy he sent it at all. He's a busy guy who no doubt got a lot of fan mail during the peak Beatle years. Number 6. Autocorrect Shout out to all of you out there who have had frustrations with autocorrect and just trying to get your device to understand what you're saying or thinking. School bullies Kearney and Dolph take a memo to beat up Martin on a Newton device in an episode of The Simpsons that aired in 1994. The memo gets quickly translated to Eat Up Martha, an early foreshadowing of autocorrect frustrations. The Simpsons was lampooning Apple's underwhelming Newton, the iPhone's ancient ancestor that had just been released and included shoddy handwriting recognition according to Fast Company. The ironic thing isn't just the prediction, it's the fact that to this day, this is still a problem for technology. You'd think that we would have gotten this resolved by now, but nope. Number 5. US Wins the Gold in Curling in one of the show's many international trips, Homer and Marge get drafted into the U.S. curling team for the 2010 Winter Olympics. Despite the odds against them, they are able to sweep Sweden and win the gold. It took eight years before this stone reached its target as the recent 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang featured the same matchup and result. This is one of those things where it may seem like it was destined to happen, but remember, it wasn't just the U.S. won gold in curling, but they did it by beating the Swedes, just as Marge and Homer did. That's quite a specific prediction to come true. Number 4. Disney Bice Fox Disney is king. Whether you want to admit it or not, they are. But that's honestly because they've been buying all sorts of extensions for themselves over the last 10 plus years. They bought Marvel Comics, they bought Lucasfilm, and now they officially own Fox and all of its properties, which is a huge get, and one that would be shocking if The Simpsons didn't predict it in 1998. Yep, they did that. The episode When You Dish Upon a Star has Homer making a movie script and actually getting picked up by Ron Howard and Brian Gazer. As they go to the movie studio, we see that it got backing from 20th Century Fox but under the logo are the words, A Division of Walt Disney Co. They knew this would happen two decades before it did. What crystal ball do they have that makes this all work? Number 3. NSA Spying on Us Hey, tell me, do you think the government is spying on you? If you did, you wouldn't be alone. A lot of people think that they are through our phones, our computers, even our televisions at times, and all these spying endeavors can often be traced back to the NSA, more times than not anyway. In the 2007 big budget production The Simpsons movie, Homer and the family have to go on the run after an incident at a nearby lake, but while they're fleeing by by bus, the NSA actually hacks into the bus driver, who was a robot, just so you know, so that they could listen in on their conversation. Six years later, in 2013, Edward Snowden revealed to the world that the NSA was indeed listening to people's conversations, and that drove the world nuts in many ways. Yet fans of The Simpsons were like, huh, they predicted this would happen, makes you wonder. Number 2. Ordinary Astronaut Well, I'm never gonna let something like that happen again! I'm going into space right now! In a famous Simpsons storyline, NASA elects to send an average person into space to increase ratings for shuttle launches. If you haven't seen the episode, they select Homer and hijinks ensue. Surely, no one from the real world could do such a thing, right? Well, in 2013, the United Kingdom held a contest to turn an ordinary person into an astronaut, which consisted of multiple interviews and rigorous testing in Cape Canaveral. The winner was 25-year-old Oliver Knight, who beat more than 250 candidates to take a trip into space with 23 other winners. Winners. It's safe to say NASA learned from their source material and chose to not stock potato chips or ants on the shuttle, but if they did, we wouldn't judge them too much. Number 1. Game of Thrones Finale Game of Thrones for years was the best show on television. The adaptation of the works of George R. R. Martin had many fans gripped for years and frequently tuning into HBO when the new season dropped so that they could watch the next episode. However, by the time of season 6 and 7, they had run out of source material because Martin hadn't finished the book series. Thus, the showrunners and writing team finished it themselves, and it didn't end well. And the series finale is rated one of the most hated series finales of all time, which is saying something when you think about shows like Lost, How I Met Your Mother, Gossip Girl, Dexter, and so on and so forth. In 2017, on a season 29 episode of The Simpsons titled The Surfsons, which spoofed various aspects of Game of Thrones, Homer revives a dragon that proceeds to incinerate a village. Up until that point, the dragons of Daenerys had only burned certain things, not whole villages, but this was clearly different, and the positioning of the shot is not unlike the shot certain 
Cersei Lannister had when she watched the dragon Drogon burn down King's Landing in season 8 of the show. I'm sure fans were roaring with laughter when the episode aired, and then were horrified when it came true with the Game of Thrones finale season. Way to go, showrunners. And there you have it, a look at The Simpsons and how they have well and truly predicted the future of the world 15 times. Trust us, we couldn't believe it either. Which of these predictions did you think was the most insane? Which ones do you feel was fair for them to predict? What do you think they'll predict next? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.